Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Wolo. A lot could happen within 10 years and it's 21 days to the end of 2019, 21 days to the end of a decade. A lot can happen. If I was told I would be in Canada within this decade, I don't think I would have believed it. But somehow I was lucky to have met someone who helped me and just showed me what to do and I am in Canada today. And my videos, my channel is about sharing information concerning immigrating to Canada, life in Canada and everything useful about Canada. So thank you so much for subscribing. Um, if this is the first time you are seeing my videos, I will say thank you and also request that you click on the subscribe button and the notification bell. And anytime I upload a video, you'll be among the first set of people to know about the video. Today's video is actually a summary of the immigration pathways for 2019 and anything could change in 2020. For those who are already in the process, I'll say just keep the faith and just keep hope alive. For those who have not started, I'll request that you actually start. If it's your dream to be in Canada, it is better to start the process. And starting the process requires that you write the IELTS exam, get the highest scores in IELTS, or write the TCF or the TAF or the CELPIP, and also evaluate your credentials. Those are the first two requirements concerning immigration. No matter what kind of immigration, you require those two documents to get started. Now, in summarizing express entry, express entry is more like a system that houses every other kind of um, immigration pathways. For express entry, you need the IELTS to actually create your express entry profile. You also need to have evaluated your credentials to be able to create an express entry profile. When you create an express entry profile, um, based on your answers, you will get what is called a comprehensive ranking score. Now, at the beginning of this year, the ranking score was actually not high, but towards the end of the year, we have started seeing high scores as high as 470, 470. 71 472 so it means that there is so much demand for people wanting to immigrate through the express entry system now the express entry system is favorable for persons who are within the age bracket of 19 to 30 have a master's degree or a phd have at least three years work experience and if you have a sibling and if you have um, the language ability in French, so if you're bilingual, it could also be favorable to you if you are, let's say, above 30, but you have a PhD, a master's, you have the highest IELTS scores, and you also have the French scores. It could be favorable to you. But if you don't have, if you're not bilingual, it is favorable to people between the ages of 19 to 30. Those are the people who have kind of the highest scores that get drawn when there is whenever there is a draw they get drawn and get um, the invitation to apply now you should not be discouraged if you don't find yourself in this um, category you can also create your express entry profile and at the same time start searching for a provincial nomination even if your comprehensive ranking score in the express entry pool is very low you can actually get a provincial nomination now there are some provinces that go directly to the express entry pool and give people provincial nomination and these provinces are alberta ontario nova scotia and new brunswick for ontario they have what they call the tech draws and also have the human capital pathway the tech draws are for people whose occupations are in the information technology industry software developers software engineers you know about six or seven um, technology occupations this group of people usually get nominations if they are in the express entry pool and they get nominations from Ontario the human capital pathway also has some occupations like human resources accounting and some other occupations and if your comprehensive ranking score is as high as 440 you're likely to get a nomination from Ontario for Alberta, it's also the same thing. If your comprehensive ranking score is up as from 300, they said 300, but um, from what I have observed, they've actually been giving nominations to people whose comprehensive ranking score in the express entry pool is 400 and above. So you shouldn't give up. 
like i said it is important to create the express entry profile just be in the pool and you might be lucky to get a nomination from a province nova scotia also goes into the express entry pool to search for people and give them letter of invitation to apply for a provincial nomination same thing with new brunswick and new brunswick specifically um, gives nomination to people who are in the healthcare profession and have created an express entry profile so if you're in the healthcare profession you're a registered nurse you're a psychiatric nurse and you are in the express entry pool your, your scores are not high enough just be um, hopeful you can get a nomination from um, New Brunswick hopefully in addition to that New Brunswick also from time to time goes outside of Canada to recruit people to come to Canada using their recruitment event and they publish where they go to from time to time for this year they've exhausted all the places they were either in dubai they were in london they were in philippines they were in korea they were in ukraine and next year they are also going to you know start the same process of the recruitment events by going outside of canada to search for people to come to work in canada so if you know anybody living in these places they should watch out for new brunswick recruitment events and also the requirement is you um, evaluating your credential and writing IELTS. so without those two documents you cannot attend the new brunswick recruitment event and i am so happy because one person who attended the birmingham session was able to get a job offer and the person is already processing his work permit to come to canada as a work permit holder and also from the process you know become a permanent resident in canada so that's the beauty of it there are several options and you don't need to restrict yourself so the purpose of this video is for 2020 you shouldn't restrict yourself to just one pathway when there are several pathways with which you can come to canada in addition to the provincial nomination i'm talking about the manitoba provincial nomination as well for manitoba it is well known that you require a strong connection in terms of having a sibling living in manitoba or having a cousin living in manitoba or having a friend now the thing with having a friend is with the recent draws with the recent um, draw scores that we've seen so far even if you indicate that you have a friend you are not likely to get drawn whenever there is a um, draw for the manitoba provincial nomination so when i receive emails from people saying i should support them as a friend i quickly tell them politely that even if i say go ahead indicate that you have a friend in manitoba it's very difficult to get drawn from for manitoba using a friend because the scores will not be high enough even people who have relatives they are also finding it difficult getting their relatives um, nominated or getting their relatives drawn because this cause has been high these days so if your relative is living outside of winnipeg then the person can be among the group of people who can get drawn whenever they do a manitoba provincial nomination draw for a long time the the focus for mpmp has actually been strategic recruitment initiative so people who had relatives are still waiting to get drawn to get a manitoba provincial nomination besides that there are also other pathways within manitoba that does not require you having a relative living in manitoba and one of them is the francophone immigration pathway and the second is the strategic recruitment initiative the third one is the modern immigration program so these three programs you don't need to have a connection you don't need to have a sibling for strategic recruitment initiative companies usually look for people they want to hire and use that as a means of bringing them to manitoba through the provincial nomination program so if you are in the tech industry i also did a video about um, a company in manitoba that actually was looking for software developers this year they advertised three times where they were looking for software developers to invite to um, come to manitoba for an exploratory visit and after which they would get a nomination so that's for the strategic recruitment for the francophone um pathway you need to be bilingual and you must have written both ielts and also the test the evaluation process so if you're bilingual you don't need to have a connection in manitoba you can apply for that pathway 
and it opens once or twice in a year so you just have to watch out for that if you're bilingual if you're not bilingual take advantage of it and start learning french the third one is the modern immigration for skilled workers and they have targeted occupations presently they have um, need for heavy duty mechanic they have need for welders they have need for cooks they have need for automotive technician they have need for industrial painters they have need for mechanical assembler they have need for early childhood educators now these occupations are targeted occupations and you just what you need to do is apply but as usual you also need to write IELTS and you must have evaluated your credentials for these other occupations like the um, welders cooks you don't need to have an express entry profile you apply to them directly you will come for an exploratory visit and have an interview with an immigration officer if you are successful you get a provincial nomination with which you apply to the federal and then get a permanent resident status and you are you come to canada as a permanent resident but for the early childhood educator you need to create an express entry profile for that that's the only occupation under the modern immigration that requires you to create an express entry profile so you must have an express entry profile and also apply to modern directly i think i need to do a separate video for that i've done a video for it once before but they have updated the targeted occupations and um i'll do a, a separate video for that and show you what to do so that's for manitoba uh, provincial nomination a summary for saskatchewan saskatchewan changed their occupations in demand list to exclusion list where they listed some occupations that they do not need in saskatchewan so what it means is if your occupation is on the exclusion list you cannot apply for a saskatchewan provincial nomination but if your occupation is not on that list you can apply for a saskatchewan provincial nomination you put in your expression of interest and if you are if you have a relative in saskatchewan then it's a better thing because you get additional points but if you do not have a relative in saskatchewan you can also apply and if you have a master's degree you are between the ages of 19 to 34 years you have good number of years of working experience and your score is about 68 to 70 then you can actually get a letter notifying you to complete a full application to get a provincial nomination from saskatchewan so saskatchewan is becoming popular because you don't you, you you can actually get a nomination from that province without really having a relative in saskatchewan so these are the provincial nominations that are available presently for 2019 and will still be available for 2020 there might be one or two changes and when these changes occur i will also let you know about the changes now for other provinces like the atlantic provinces there is the aipp and of course aipp requires that you have to search for a job the same thing with the rural and northern immigration pilot you also have to search for a job i have done extensive videos about rural and northern immigration pilot which have just started the only requirement is searching for a job and writing the IELTS and also evaluating your credential with which you can use to apply. So it's basically about searching for jobs in these communities and in these provinces to be eligible for either the AIPP or the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot. There are also other programs like the Child Caregiver, the Home Support Worker. It also requires you searching for a job as well then the agri immigration pilot also requires searching for a job i think the immigration pathways are tending towards searching for a job most of the new um pathways that have been introduced requires job search and we all know how difficult it is to search for a job but i'm not discouraging you just keep applying and keep your fingers crossed you can actually get a job offer that can bring you to canada the other pathways self-employed i talked about it if you are an artist if you know anybody who's an artist a writer a photographer a videographer whatever and they are self-employed they can sustain themselves they can actually 
apply to immigrate to Canada and become permanent residents. There is one I have not talked about and that is the startup visa. Now the startup visa requires searching for an angel investor. So if you have a fantastic idea, an innovative idea that is going to be um, a boom, let's say by the time you introduce the idea to an angel investor, they like it, they will actually you know, help support your immigration to Canada so that you can come and start up the business in Canada. Then for Quebec, Quebec is a total different immigration pathway of, of its own. They have the Arima portal and I think I'll talk about Quebec in, in one video, in a separate video. I'm on so many videos these days. I'll try as much as possible to create this video so that people can become aware of all these options that are available. Then the last option that is also available for people who plan to come to Canada is the um, visitor's visa to work permit option. So this option is you coming to Canada as a visitor and then searching for a job. Once you get a job offer, you can apply for a work permit and after working for one year, you can be eligible to apply to become a permanent resident under the Canadian Experience class. Now, this also requires you writing IELTS and also evaluating your credentials. So this is a summary of all the pathways of immigrating to Canada and you should explore all options and explore the ones that is suitable for you based on your age, based on your educational qualification and based on your work experience. I know the most difficult one out of all these ones is actually the job set and you know getting to convince an employer that you are a good fit for the job and then they giving you an offer with which you can use to apply for either AIPP or RNIP or home care or um, agri pilot you know all these new pilots that have been introduced actually requires job search for 2020 things might change and um once things change i would let you know if there is any new information any new pilots that will be introduced i think i should mention one that was talked about prior to the election and that is the municipal immigration pilot where communities will be the ones to choose who they want to immigrate to their community and it's still basically almost the same thing like searching for a job offer and all that so anyway so this is the information i want to share and also encourage everybody who is planning to immigrate to canada in the coming decade if you wish to live in canada it's the best time to start is now because if you keep procrastinating and postponing all your plans things keep changing things become difficult and before you know what is happening you get stuck in the process i don't want you to get stuck i want you to be in canada just like me and um enjoy the cold weather <laughs> it's actually minus 20 degrees today but we are thriving in it we don't complain we just have to embrace the weather so this is the all the information i would love to share for you today and hope to see you in my next video thank you so much for watching and see you soon Bye bye